Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to do a movie talk on Jane Eyre, the 2011 edition with Michael Fassbender and Mia... What's the... I said that right. I'm going to start this off by saying I loved this movie. I love the book. Yes, there are differences, and I know a lot of people kind of don't like the movie because there are so many differences, but the thing is, I went through and I watched the deleted scenes and it made me feel so much better about it. I still loved the movie because I felt like the acting was fantastic and what liberties they did take to make it theatrical, it, it was really, they, were, they made good choices. The good far outweighs the bad. So I'm gonna go through the movie kind of point by point, things that I really, really just fell in love with and things that differed from the book or how it was similar or how they managed to weave them together. So yeah, I really like to hear you guys' thoughts about this. So every time I like say something, feel free to say, I agreed with point this, I disagreed, or what about this? Just comment, just comment down there. Let's just take a second to appreciate the cinematography of this movie. Just, oh, uh, I'm just melting over it. Okay, one thing that they changed that I understand why they changed, because it would be a very fine line to dance on and Ultimately, I'm okay with them doing that, but if you're... I just better say what I'm even talking about first. Uh, Bertha in the books was black, but the thing is, this was in 1897, I believe the book was written. Times are very different now than when they were then. If you look at the... if you just read the book for what it is a book, and you don't analyze every freaking detail like I had to do for my Britlet class, it wouldn't really be that big of a thing. That's, that's a thing that changed. I understand why they did it, because times change. Get it understandable. So I'm okay with that. I am so happy that they kept the I must stay in good health quote when what's his face the head of the Lowood school I don't remember his name uh he comes and he's just like do you know where the wicked go uh when they die and, and then little Jane responds well they go to hell and he's like and would you like to burn in that pit or something to that effect and she's like no sir well how would you avoid that I must stay in good health and not die. <laughs> Spunky little sassy Jane. I forgot how much I really loved her. She does have the stuff with Helen. Helen is not in this as much as she was in the book, and I really loved Helen. Um, but I watched, and I'll talk about this in a minute, um, I watched the deleted scenes, and I so wish they had these couple deleted scenes that added Helen into it when she was going through the moors, the moors, when she was out in the moors and she was like hallucinating. Oh, it was so cool. Um, and the fact that they filmed that, made me feel like more okay with it because they couldn't put it in there but they wanted to and so I kind of am like, it's okay, I feel your feel, I understand. But so anyway, now that Jane is at Thornfield and it's kind of become this routine and Mr. Rochester is there now and they're playing like racquetball and him and a couple other men are like, you know, getting this tree up from the ground or something and it just, it felt like time was passing. That scene and the music in that scene, the music in every scene, I want the score, I want it. Um, I'm a classic movie, a classic movie, I'm a classic music junkie. Weird factoid, I like piano music and like Debussy and Urama and uh, Bach and what is I'm weird like that, I know, it's weird, but I like it. And in the deleted scenes, they have this part where Mr. Rochester talking to Jane about Celine, which is Adele's mother, and he has the jealousy quote, like that was one of the parts in the book that I just fell in love with that scene, just because I don't know why I loved it so much, but I really, really did. I loved that jealousy quote and it completely explains everything that he does with Ingram and it just explains it because then when you go back and you're just like, oh, I should have known. Anyway, I really love that part. And they film this and again, it's one of those times where I'm like, it's okay. I know you had to cut things. I wish you didn't have to cut it, but they filmed it and so I'm okay that it, they, they tried, they tried, so I forgive. The thing is though, um, why I'm okay with that, there's this one that I'm just, I'm not okay with. They needed it in the movie. Then later when Mr. Rochester's explaining to Jane why he like, you know, faked being with Blanche and everything, and I said Ingram before, didn't I? Miss Ingram, Blanche, you, whatever. Um, but he didn't explain the whole thing, how she didn't know jealousy because she was so, you know, inexperienced, and I don't remember the quote exactly, but Ooh, I'm sure you remember it. If you know it, tell me in the comments. But he didn't explain that later. It was implied, and I think only the people that read the book could, could understand it. Everyone else is like, what? So I think that needed to be in there. So then when Jane left, I love that Mr. Rochester went out on his horse and he was looking for her. That's something we didn't get from the book, and I really, really appreciate it. We, it doesn't, it doesn't happen often. Actually, I think that's the only part where we see something that is not directly something Jane sees. But I'm so glad that they put it in there. They were very smart and that they did that so sparingly. And let me just say, they kept two of my favorite lines from the book. 
they kept it and it made me so freaking happy. Like I just started squealing and you know, recording it on Instagram. That happened, it did. They had the Ottoman quote and they kept the I'm no bird, no nut and snares me quote, which I love so much. <laughs> oh yeah, and the other part that I'm also just in love with, there's just this whole scene I'm just uh about. Um, when Jane is the one that says, oh, I must leave, which is different from the book. And then Mr. Rochester, oh my God, they had the part. I'm so glad they had this part. I think if they didn't have this part, like verbatim from the book like they did, I would have just, no, I would have no. Because they kept the, it is as if I had a string somewhere under my left ribs, slightly and inextricably knotted to a similar string situated in the corresponding quarter of your little frame. They changed it just a little bit, but they had it, okay? It made me so happy. And they, they even kept this part. I'm afraid that quarter communion will snap. I have the notion I should take to bleeding inwardly. And as for you, you'd forget me. <laughs> just, oh my god. Can we just gush over that for this whole video? I would. I would. I'm going to stop myself. Okay, so now that the proposal thing has happened, I'm trying to do this chronologically, even with the deleted scenes, just work with me here. So there is a scene that was deleted and I just, I wish they put it in there. It was so freaking creepy. I was, I am a horror movie fanatic and I was disturbed, okay? I was really disturbed. And it was where Bertha, uh, she put on Jane's uh, wedding dress or her veil, I think it was just her veil, and we, you know, Jane wakes up and she sees this and then she's like ripping it like this and she, oh, it's so creepy and I loved it and I so wish that they put it in there but that was just like, oh, it was perfect. But so now we're going kind of like flash forward stuff where she's at that cottage thing where she's going to teach and everything and she opens the door and it's Mr. Rochester and they kiss and I'm just sitting there going, that's not in the book. How, I mean, it was like one of those conflicted things like where are they going to go with this? I would eh. and then it ends up being St. John, St. John. Anyway, he said that Jane was fit to be the wife of a missionary because just that one sentence just reflects so many paragraphs that we got in the book. And I felt like that was really beautifully written. Whoever did the screenwriting for this was just fantastic too, by the way. But it really showed that he did not love Jane. He's just like this is a very like business transaction like thing and there's no feeling and then Jane has this quote and god I can't remember it basically saying it's like oh well love will come with time like you'll marry me and then you know it with time and she's just like um I don't want your idea of love like you're so wrong and I, I really wish that I could remember this another part that I'm so happy that they kept when she was arguing with St. John and he's just like oh well, you need to marry me because missionary's wife anyway that argument and they were outside and then she hears Jane Jane, they're keeping it. And then she whispered back, wait for me like I'm coming. And oh, I love that. And then when she was on St. John's uh, doorstep and then she, like we had all this thought process, they cut that really short. I understand why for the sake of time, but she's just like, I'll die, I'll die. And it was like the slightest whisper. Like I had to listen to it a couple times, but it was there. Little things like that, I appreciated. So then when Jane goes to Thornfield and she finds it all burnt down, um, it's Mrs. Fairfax that explains what everything that happened and not that other man. I'm okay with, I'm okay with that. But then Mrs. Fairfax explains that Mr. Rochester wanted to get everybody out of the building and then he went up onto the rooftop and tried to get Bertha done, but she jumped. And then she said that he just stood there in the flames, like letting it envelop him. And the first time that I saw the movie, I was kind of upset by that. I was like, that makes no sense. But then I remember they didn't have this in the movie and maybe this was like, you know, like trans transmitting it what's the word anyway I, I thought you were dead and so he's in that state of mind and now I would understand why he would just stand there in the flames he remembered hearing her say wait for me I'm coming and that's why he didn't end up killing himself that something like that happened in the book anyway so I think they kind of like picked this for that and I'm glad now that I thought about it again it makes sense but let's talk about the ending though okay so um literally the first time I saw it of course I was in tears because tears he wasn't as badly mutilated as he was in the book like he was completely missing an eye in the book if i remember correctly i mean michael fassbender can pretty much never be an unattractive man like it's impossible uh, but they didn't want to like make him look like frankenstein or something and he was crippled and everything and i i liked that okay and i was bawling throughout that scene because i do that i cry at books and movies all the time i'm known for it. my friends if there's ever a sad part just look over he is crying it happens every time but literally the first time I saw the movie, I yelled at my television. I was like, that's not the ending. That's not the ending. Because like he got his sight back. They, like they had, a, they had a child, they had a son. And then his sight kind of came back enough where he could see the child. And then she said on that occasion, 
he again with a full heart acknowledged that God had tempered judgment with mercy. But I felt like that was such an important part. Like it was a good way to end it. There's not even a deleted scene with this. And that's I think why I'm kind of more about it. It's not the ending. It's not the ending. I'm okay with it now. After the second time, I'm like, that's a good place to end it. Overall, I loved this movie. I really did. And I want to know what you guys thought of it or what you think of other adaptations versus this or the BBC one. Up in the top corner is my previous video. This one down here is my, actually my last video, not just like a previous one that I did. And then down here is the music that I used. And maybe if there's space below me, like here, down, down here is some social medias. That was an accent that doesn't exist. Yeah, okay, I will see you guys later next time on Book Worms Talk. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. I want to know all your thoughts on this. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like, that too. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye. I, I don't even know how the words work. How do the words work? <laughs> words work, but just not for me.